On my own two feet. Character. The willingness to accept responsibility for one's own life is the source from which self-respect springs. Joan Didion. Introductory material. Dear learner, this material will help you study the topics related to learning activity one. You will learn about one, the third conditional. Two, vocabulary about initiative and self-direction. Let's begin. One, the third conditional. A, introduction to third conditional. The third conditional is a structure we use to talk about unreal situations in the past. Conditions in the past that did not happen. It is also like a dream with no possibility of coming true. Don't worry if this seems confusing. The example below will help you understand. Situation. Last week, you bought a lottery ticket, but you didn't win. Today, you are on a bus, looking through the window, fantasizing with the idea of winning the lottery. You need the third conditional to express those fantasies. Fantasies. If I had won the lottery, I would have bought a house for my parents. If I had won the lottery, I would have bought tickets for a tour around the world. I would have applied for a master's programme in Europe if I had won the lottery. I would have had the capital I need to start my own company if I had won the lottery. B. Structure. A third conditional sentence has two parts, an if clause and a main clause. If clause, if I had won the lottery. Main clause, I would have bought a house for my parents. Explanation. I didn't buy a house for my parents because I didn't win the lottery. If the if clause comes first, you have to use a comma. If the if clause comes second, no comma is necessary. Main clause. I would have bought a house for my parents. If clause. If I had won the lottery. We need to use different verb forms in each part of a third conditional. If clause. If plus subject plus had plus past participle. Main clause. Subject plus would or could or might have plus past participle. C. Usage. The third conditional is often used to express criticism, regret, to daydream, or to speculate about the past. Remember, the third conditional forms can be contracted. Full form. If I had won the lottery, I would have bought a house for my parents. Contracted. Remember, the third conditional forms can be contracted. Example. Example. If you can also use the third condition to express wishes, desires, and even regrets about the past. Take a look at the following examples. I wish I hadn't yelled at my mum. Interpretation. I yelled at my mum and now I feel awful. I wish I had taken more advantage of my classes at the university. Interpretation. I didn't take advantage of my classes at the university. She wishes her sister had gotten a raise. Interpretation. Her sister didn't get a raise and financial stability that it would have brought. Now let's see the structure you should use when expressing wishes about the past. Subject, 
plus wish or wishes, plus subject, plus past perfect. I wish you hadn't lost your job. He wishes he had gone to the party. Two, vocabulary about initiative and self-direction. Learning is more effective when learners are active in the learning process, assuming responsibility for their learning and participating in the decisions which affect it. By Susan Sheeran. Are you satisfied with the way you've learned things so far? Do you have any regrets about not learning something as well as you wanted? Do you think your instructor is the most important person in your process? Do you regret giving up something you wanted to learn because you didn't know how to do it? Do you know you can learn to learn better? Don't panic. It's never too late to learn how to perform better in any area. In this part of Learning Activity 1, you will get familiar with some effective strategies that, if applied, will help you achieve any goal you set for yourself. Now you will learn about concepts such as initiative and self-direction that will allow you to improve your performance at any level. Self-direction and self-directed learning. In its broadest meaning, self-direction is to come to terms with the idea that you are the engine of your learning process and agree to do something about it. Once you decide to be responsible for your own learning, you enter the realm of self-directed learning. Self-directed learning is a process that has the following essential components. Initiative to diagnose your learning needs, with or without assistance. Formulation of your learning goals. Planning for the achievement of those goals. Management of time and effort. Assessment of the products of your learning experience. Notice how initiative is one of the crucial elements in self-directed learning. Do you know what initiative is? Initiative. Initiative is that first step towards action. It means doing something on your own without waiting for someone to tell you what to do. Initiative can also mean being proactive. Here are some examples where initiative plays a key role. A. Save up to buy an apartment. B. E, read a book to learn something new. C. Study for a test. D. Volunteer for a good cause. E. Share your ideas with classmates or colleagues. Below you will find some benefits of using your initiative. A. Accomplishing your goals. If you don't use your initiative, your goals are like a horse without legs. Without that initial energy in action, you won't advance an inch. Initiative is the energy that pushes you to go after your goals. B. Standing out. It's not a secret that if you show initiative, people will notice you. In a work context, you're more likely to get a promotion or to get a raise if you're proactive. C. Creating opportunities. The more initiative you take, the more chances you have to show your talents. Even if you're not given opportunities by other people, you will see them yourself. You are now familiar with the importance initiative has in self-directed learning. In order to learn more about how to increase your initiative, we are going to learn how to set effective learning goals. 
Be smart with your goals. Would you tell me please which way I ought to go from here? That depends a good deal on where you want to get to. I don't much care where. Then it doesn't matter which way you go. By Lewis Carroll, Alice in Wonderland. If you don't know what you want to accomplish, it's difficult to take a first step, to focus your effort, to know you're advancing. Setting goals can help with all this. It's like traveling. If you're going to travel, you need to have a destination. This destination will help you use your energy more efficiently. It will be a kind of map that will show you how much you've advanced, how much you have learned, what other tools you need, and how close you are to your objective. In order to set effective goals, we will use a strategy from the world of management called SMART Goals. SMART is an acronym that outlines the way goals and objectives should be created in order to increase the likelihood of success. Let's see what each letter stands for. S, specific. M, measurable. A, attainable. R, relevant. T, time specific. Now, let's understand each of them in more depth. Specific. Your goal should be clear and explicit. To make goals specific, they must describe exactly what's expected, why it's important, who's involved, where it's going to happen, and which attributes are important. A good way to know if your goal is specific is to check if it answers the following questions. What do I want to accomplish? What are my specific reasons for doing this? Is there anyone else involved in this goal? What places are involved? What do I need to accomplish my goal? Measurable. You should be able to measure your progress. If you don't know whether you're advancing towards it or not, you won't be able to take corrective actions to experience the sense of accomplishment that comes when you see the fruit of your efforts. Depending on your goal, the measuring tools may vary, but the following questions will help you see if you're objectively evaluating your progress. What indicators am I using? Are the indicators reliable? Are there better indicators? Is there a test that can measure my progress? Attainable. Your goal should be realistic and attainable. Your goal should not be too difficult because you can get frustrated. It shouldn't be too easy either because you can get bored. It should be challenging enough to motivate you to keep on going and make you feel that your determination brings results. A good way to know if your goal is attainable is to see if it answers the following questions. Realistically, can I accomplish this goal with the time and resources I have now? If so, how? Relevant. Your goal should be something that matters. Your goal should drive you forward professionally and or personally. A good way to assess the relevance of your goal is by answering the following questions. Is this goal meaningful? Does this match my efforts and or needs? Will this goal help me advance professionally and or personally? Time specific. You should give your goal a target date. To have a deadline, helps you to be more committed and focus your efforts more efficiently. A deadline will keep you on track. A good way to know if your goal is time specific is by answering the following questions. What is the time limit of this goal? Can I achieve my goal within this time limit? How much time do I need to invest every day to accomplish this goal?
A flood destroyed Miguel's town. Rita's reflections about how things could have been better if different actions had been taken. If Miguel had known about the dangers, he would have left the town. If the government had warned the citizens, then many people wouldn't have lost all their belongings. If the government had listened to the warnings of the meteorologists, the town could have taken more precautions. If the town had had a better emergency plan, the losses wouldn't have been so severe. If Miguel had been warned, he could have bought emergency supplies of food and water. If the government had provided buses and helicopters, then everyone could have been evacuated. <laughs>